Should you use your running watch's heart rate sensor or a chest strap for better accuracy on your heart rate readings for your training? Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Alyssa Lenick. I have a PhD in exercise physiology and today I'm here to talk to you about most accurate ways to measure your heart rate during your cardio and running training. If you've been around the block, fitness watches and fitness trackers are very popular. And if you've seen this on almost every single fitness watch on the market, there's an optical sensor here that is made to measure heart rate or heart rate readings. Now, when it comes to what these can measure accurately compared to calories and or energy expended and or maybe sleep or other features, the heart rate reading response on these are more accurate overall. However, when it comes to our actual training and measuring our heart rate during training, they aren't going to be as accurate as something like a chest strap. The reason that these are less accurate than these is due to the technology that is used for how they're measuring heart rate. So when it comes to fitness trackers or your running watches, they use something known as photoplethysmography. Fun fact, my first ever research project in undergrad was on heart rate monitor watches using photoplethysmography when it was first introduced over a decade ago and I'm aging myself. Essentially what this does is it puts optical sensors that will shine light into your skin beneath where the sensor is. And what it does then is it essentially measures changes in blood volume and the light that is refracted back to estimate your heart rate or your heart beating response. The reason that this is slightly less accurate is one, it's not measuring the true electrical conductivity or your actual beats per minute of your heart. It's an indirect estimation based off blood volume changes and or what the sensor is reading. Three, sometimes it's not always reading your heart rate and it can get something known as cadence lock. If you're a runner, it might be tracking your cadence or your running cadence or steps per minute rather than your heart rate yourself. You will see that sometimes it will get locked in and match almost your cadence readings exactly. People with darker skin tones and or tattoos might not have as accurate readings, specifically those who have tattoos around that wrist area, as well as the oscillation or the bouncing of the watch when you're moving or training might decrease its accuracy as well as it might not be as sensitive in detecting fluctuations in your heart. So if you were doing an interval training session or going between high hard efforts and lower easier efforts, it might have a delay or not as accurately measure or detect those switches. Now for general people, regular everyday people, people who are not super dialed in on zones of their heart rate or training, this is likely fine enough. You don't need to have a super accurate heart rate reading unless it's something that you are training for or care about when it comes to your training. I think it's important to know that your watch, depending on your model and or your own response or use of it, is going to likely over or underestimate your zones. For me, I have a Sunto Barrow 9. I love this watch, but when I run with it without my chest rate strap, I know for me personally, it's somewhere between 10 to 15 beats per minute higher than my actual training intensity. This is helpful for me because if I'm just using my watch and I'm trying to run in zone two and it says I'm about 10 beats per minute over it, I don't really worry about it. I think that's probably close enough. However, for other people, their watches underestimate. When I had a whoop band, I found for me personally, it underestimated my heart rate response compared to my chest strap. It's all about the model and make that you're using. And sometimes you can just use the heart rate and effort that you're using with the watch and compare it to your RPE, your talk test, or your breathing rate to kind of get an idea of where you are relative to what your watch is estimating. Now, on the other hand, chest straps are going to be the most accurate way to measure your heart rate during training more than your watch, and yes, even more than the armbands. Now, armbands have become popular and they're using the same technology as your watches, but they're simply doing it on your arm, the same light wave-based estimates of your blood volume and or changes within the light refraction but they do appear to be more accurate due to their placement and their tightness and being on the arm than some of the wrist-based ones, but you might have some of the issues still here with this that you have with this. If you hate a chest strap and you prefer that, it's probably gonna get you most of the way there. It's totally okay to use and I get it. I also don't love the way the band feels on my chest. But when it comes to getting the most accurate heart rate readings for your training, you're gonna wanna opt for simply a heart rate chest strap monitor. The way these works is essentially these two pads here, these slick areas, they essentially are going to go right below your heart, which is, which is placed slightly to the left here on your chest. And they're gonna measure the electrical conductivity of your heart beat per beat in the minute. The sensor will read that and it will send that to the watch that you have. That is going to be more accurate. This is what we use in exercise physiology labs for accurate heart rate based testing and or we use these in any sort of research based studies when we are trying to more accurately test and assess heart rate. This is a specifically a Sunto one that goes with the brand of the watch I have. However, you can get these from almost any brand. Polar, Garmin, there's generic ones on Amazon that I have linked on my Amazon storefront. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. You just want something that is going to have the electrode here that can, that can convey that signal and these stress straps and pads here. 
You may or may not need to or want to get these wet if you have a hard time getting them to connect with your heart more accurately, but if you're sweating during cardiovascular training, that takes care of it for yourself. However, in research studies, sometimes we have to run them underwater to get them to connect with our watches. But if you want to improve the accuracy of your training zones, your zone two training, or get a better idea where your heart rate actually is at, I highly recommend using a chest strap to measure your heart rate within your training. Again, I know not everyone loves these. They aren't always the most comfortable, but they are going to be more accurate if that's something that you care about. At the end of the day, pick the tool that gets the job done for what you need it for. If you're not super dialed in, you don't need to be super obsessed with your specific zone or your zone two or the intensity you're at, your heart rate readings. A simple watch or not measuring your heart rate at all can be okay. But if you are someone who's specifically trying to train or manage their intensity and or how hard they're going, the zones they're in, or just see how their fitness is improving over time a little bit more accurately, I highly recommend getting a chest strap. They're cheap, they're easy, and it can be just comfortably placed around your chest depending on the way you get them in a way that works for you. And if you hate it, potentially using an armband as a happy medium between the two. I hope you found this video helpful. Do you have a hard time assessing your heart rate and or knowing what the right zones for you are? Below I'm gonna link my free zones calculator which will help you find the exact heart rate targets that are specific and unique to you and help you dial that in even more specifically with your watch or your new heart rate chest strap monitor that you're likely going to buy after the end of this video. If you found this helpful, let me know below and otherwise subscribe so you don't miss the next one.